Hi, this is section 3B, and in this section I'm going to talk about the connection between matrices and something called a geometric transformation. So we're going to think of things from a new perspective here and go back to matrix multiplication. So we have a matrix A, and we multiply some vector, we'll call it X, by a matrix on the left. And now, instead of thinking this just purely in terms of algebraic terms, we now want to consider this multiplication enacting a transformation of the vector x. So we get a new vector by way of this multiplication. And in this particular section, I'm going to focus in on this multiplication, in a sense, performing a geometric transformation, such as a rotation of a vector or some sort of scaling or flipping of a vector in the plane. So we'd like to find this matrix A that, through multiplication, performs a transformation, an action. And in order to do that, we have to specify what kind of or what type of what's called the linear transformation we are considering. So we're going to uh, look at a few different cases. In the first case, I'd like to consider a rotation. Specifically, we'll say by angle theta, oriented in a counterclockwise fashion. So what I mean by that in particular is if we're given a vector in R2, let's call it V here, and I want to, through matrix multiplication, perform the action of rotating that vector through an angle theta counterclockwise. So let's say here is the angle theta. Here's my new vector, and I'd like to be able to describe that new vector by multiplication of this matrix A on the left. So then the question is, well, what is that matrix A? By the way, that matrix A is called the standard matrix of the linear transformation. So in other words, again, our task here is to find the matrix A. By the way, it'll be a two by two matrix called the standard matrix of the linear transformation, specifically here our transformation is this geometric rotation. And as it turns out, in linear algebra, there's a well-known theorem related to the question of how do I find the standard matrix of a linear transformation. What that theorem tells us, basically, is in order to find this matrix A, you need to look at what this, in this case, our linear transformation, our rotation, does to what are called standard basis vectors. In other words, what does a rotation by angle theta counterclockwise do to the unit vector in the direction of the positive x-axis, and similarly, the unit vector in the direction of the positive y-axis? So now we'll go ahead and find A, the standard matrix of this linear transformation described by a rotation through the angle theta oriented counterclockwise. As I said, there is a big theorem in linear algebra that says it's sufficient in order to find that matrix to just look at what are called the images of a standard basis vector. In other words, the images of 1, 0, and 0, 1 under this action of rotation. I've done that in two cases. We're just going to implement a little trig along the way. I begin with the vector 1, 0 drawn in green. If I rotate it counterclockwise by angle theta, um, I've drawn that angle theta to be small just to make the picture reasonable, but this result would extend for any size angle, by the way. And now I just want to look at what is this image vector, this new rotated vector. And I want to describe the components of it. So using trig, the x component, as we can see from this right triangle, is cosine theta, sure enough. And the y component is sine theta. So there is my new image vector uh, after a rotation in terms of the parameter theta. On the other hand, if I go look at the image of the standard basis vector 0, 1, I've drawn that also in green. If I rotate, once again, counterclockwise through an angle theta, here is my new image vector in red on the left. I just want to find the components x and y of that new image vector. So but using a little bit of trig, since we're in the second quadrant now, my x component is negative sine theta, which I've written here, and the y component is cosine theta. So together, we have the images under this action of rotation of both of these standard basis vectors. Now to form the matrix A, I essentially just plug these vectors in uh, represented as column vectors in for A, and we'll do that now. So now we have our matrix A that represents this rotation action in R2. So in other words, I've written now in for the column vectors of A the uh, images in order of the standard basis vector. So we have the cosine, 
sine, negative sine, cosine. Let's say our theta, our angle is 90 degrees. We wanna perform a 90 degree rotation. Then what is the corresponding matrix A? Well, I'm just gonna plug in the components as I have them. So cosine now, my theta is 90 degrees. Sine of 90 degrees, we'll evaluate these expressions in just a moment. Negative sine of 90 degrees and cosine of 90 degrees. So for this corresponding matrix, then what do we have in terms of numerical values? Well, cosine of 90 degrees, if we've had some trig, is zero. Sine of 90 degrees is one. Negative sine of 90 degrees is therefore negative one. And cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So that matrix right there, when I multiply it on the right by a vector in the plane, so two-dimensional vector, the action performed then is a rotation by 90 degrees. So let's finish this example up. If I, for instance, take this matrix A, again, which represents a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation through multiplication, let's start with a vector, let's say zero, negative one. Okay, so this will be my V. So the claim here then is I can represent the geometric action of rotating any vector in the plane, 90 degrees counterclockwise, by multiplying that vector by A as given on the left. So let's do that and just double check that this makes sense again with our intuition. So, so zero negative one dotted with zero negative one results in uh, one. One zero dotted with zero negative one results in one zero. So let's see if that actually works then. Well, I began with the vector zero negative one, okay? So zero negative one is in the plane, I'll draw that in red right here. So here's zero negative one x component zero, y component negative one. Intuitively, geometrically, what does it mean to rotate this vector 90 degrees counterclockwise? Well, I should end up back along in the direction of the x-axis, and sure enough, there is my resultant vector. In summary, we found, this is now this is our matrix for any rotation for any angle, but specifically for this example, we chose, let's say, the angle 90 degrees. And now, whenever I multiply any two-dimensional vector, by this matrix on the left, the geometric action of that multiplication is uh, this rotation. We see that with that nice example.